So I decided to stop going to classes in medical school. With all these external resources and the classes are recorded, it's more efficient to not go to class and learn our preclinical material through other means. I was skeptical at first and I was super nervous because I was always wondering like, what if I miss something that the professor says? But the sooner I learned to trust this process, the sooner I was able to save a lot more time for myself and eventually I was able to get A's in all my classes. I would like to preface that everyone has different learning strategies, but this is what worked for me. But I do recommend that you give this strategy a chance. So first things first, you need to download Anki, then the Anki deck. And I highly recommend checking out Zach Hiley's YouTube channel. He's a fourth year medical student who lays out Anki as well as its settings because you don't wanna be doing thousands of cards every day. So depending on how your medical school works, your classes may be lined up differently, but I'll be speaking from how my med school is lined up. And we have five main subjects before step one. We have infectious diseases, pharmacology, mechanism of disease, clinical diagnosis, immunology, and a sixth one called brain, mind, and behavior, but I'll talk about that in a future video. So let's jump right into it. Our first subject that we'll be talking about is intro to infectious diseases, AKA microbiology. So the best resource hands down is Sketchy. And what Sketchy is, is it's a medical education platform that uses mnemonic visual aids in the form of sketches to help students memorize complex medical concepts. It utilizes different symbols for each medication and bacteria that you'll be able to recall later. And yeah, it's kind of weird because it's like cartoony and I was skeptical at first, but this is for sure the best way to recall information in time for step as well as beyond our preclinical years. For pharmacology, you will also be using Sketchy, and Sketchy lays out fun mnemonics in order to remember the names, mechanism of action, as well as side effects of all the, all the major medications for step one. Another very nice resource that all of you will probably use is the Tulane Farm Wiki quizzes. Uh, many other medical students use these quizzes, which is pretty cool, and it helps you focus on the main high yield topics. Um, you also can find quick information on the side through the Farm Wiki articles, which is also a great resource. For our in-house exams, the most important subject you'll need to focus in on is mechanism of disease, AKA pathology, which also happens to be the highest weighted part of step one. The best resource that you'll want to use is Pathoma, specifically the videos. Dr. Hussein Sattar gives you the absolute highest yield pathology you need to know about each system. And Pathoma only covers the highest yield, so some concepts for the in-house exams may not be covered and you'll have to refer to the lecture. If you feel like you're missing something, you can also go to Boards and Beyond, which will cover every single aspect of the disease, no matter the system. So in order to stay focused on the highest yield, especially for the in-house exams to save a lot of time, Pathoma will be your best friend. Okay, so now that you know all of the major resources, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, okay, Alex, how do I know what videos to watch for these exams? And luckily our predecessors over the years have put together this spreadsheet which shows exactly what videos you need to watch for each system since our curriculum and medicine doesn't really change that much. All right, so right here, what we have is the uh, third-party resource schedule that our predecessors have very nicely put together. Uh, if you don't have it, uh, then I'll put it in, the, um, in my bio below. So it'll be in one nice spot. So for example, after, um, after you start the unit, you're probably wondering, okay, what Pathoma videos do I watch? What sketchy videos do I have watch? And right here is nicely laid out by chapter and by topic, uh, neoplasia, carcinogenesis, tumor progression, clinical characteristics, yada, yada, yada. So after I finish watching this video, I'll mark it with, uh, with green. And then right here, very nicely, we have our sketchy farm videos as well and our sketchy micro. They also listed a uh, sketchy pathology I don't recommend that because it uh, oftentimes misses out on a lot of high yield, high yield points. Okay, so now that I've watched uh, my, my Pathoma video on Neoplasia, what you can do is you can go over to your uh, Anki, you can click browse, open up right here, and um, Zach Hiley's videos laid this out very, very nicely, but what you should wanna do is you wanna go to the tags right here. Here's Pathoma, I'll open it up, and then I'll find Neoplasia right here. And I watched the Neoplasia video. So I'll click over here, Control A, Control J, and I'll unsuspend all of those cards. I'll come over here. The cards are nicely unsuspended. 
And then you can just click all cards and start studying away. So you can check out my day in the life of a medical student videos, um, which kind of lay out uh, my study technique. But um, yeah, generally what happens is after I open up Anki, I do my reviews and I do about 300, 400 new cards. And I keep doing that every day. Um, and the goal is to get through all of the videos as soon as possible, all the external resource videos. And uh, the sooner you get through those, then the sooner you can start reviewing lecture material. But honestly, you wanna break up the material because there's only so much you can absorb in one day. So by breaking it up in digestible chunks, you'll be able to absorb the material as well as possible and understand your Anki cards um, a lot better in the future. Clinical diagnosis and immunology are the lower yield classes, but this brings up our final component on how to do well on your in-house exams, which include, unfortunately, reviewing lecture material. At this point, you're probably super tired from watching several videos of Sketchy and Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, as well as doing those farm wiki quizzes, but this is where you really have to push through because these are where the easy points are. The final resource that I want to bring up, specific to Tulane, I'm sure other medical schools have it as well, is note service. So note takers are paid to take notes at the lectures, which makes you wonder, why would I take my own notes when someone is paid to take nicer notes of the same lecture? The subscription price is 100% worth it and you'll see very soon. But if you do just external resources, you should have no problem passing these exams. Um, but the extra 15 to 25% of your exam comes from reviewing these lectures and reviewing these note service. Essentially what you need to do is you need to create a centralized and searchable location with just the high yield material from these lectures. And let me show you how you do it. So in addition to this third party resource uh, spreadsheet, they also have all of the lectures lined out. And when you open up note service, this is what you're gonna see at first. It's uh, interface is kind of uh, a little old school. Uh, let's go to hematology and neoplasia, or hemonc. And uh, yeah, these are all the notes services right here. So we actually have uh, the class of 2023s, we have the class of 2024s, and the class of 2025s, and soon the class of 2026s. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the first step that I do is I go to last year's note service because it's already, already done, it's already um, then quality checked and you can click anyone and uh, it's basically you know a, a PDF document with uh, all of the notes from the lecture oftentimes there are screenshots as well for more understanding and what I do is I open up a spreadsheet and I type in everything that I think is the most important and uh, highly testable. And by this point, this is probably my second pass through because if you remember, I've already gone through my Pathoma sketchy videos. So I know what's highest yield, but certain things are emphasized in the, um, within the in-house lectures, which are oftentimes highlighted or bolded. And depending on how I'm feeling, I will uh, write it down. So I have this spreadsheet right here and it's uh, separated by topic definition and extra notes, or I like to put screenshots of images as well. And uh, this kind of helps consolidate all of the ideas. And my brain oftentimes thinks in tables, and that's how first aid is laid out as well. So sometimes the notes are uh, very well done, and sometimes they could be a little bit better, because if you remember, these are done by students. So let's say the class of 2024's note sets weren't, weren't the best. I can actually go to class of 2023's and read the exact same one on the exact same lecture, uh, taken by um, with the notes taken by someone else and that's where I will uh, write in more information or you know get my third pass through of the information. So the great thing about taking high yield notes on the already high yield document from the lecture is you have the most important stuff in front of you but let's say I get a question about fibrinolytics. Uh, one cool thing is that because this is an electro electric document, it's centralized and searchable. So I can type in fibrinolytics right here and find it right here. And um, there you go, tissue plasminogen activators. Uh, so uh, I can read about what I thought was the highest yield at that moment in time. And oftentimes what I do is I print out these notes and I've been doing this for since the eighth grade. Uh, here's my stack of notes from first year and Here's my stack of notes from uh, second year. And what I do is I go through and oftentimes I highlight or annotate. And by this point, this is my fourth or fifth pass through 
with uh, all of this information and the, um, the knowledge is starting to settle in. So let's say I get a question wrong about fiber analytics. I can find it in my documents right here, circle it, bold it, uh, highlight it over and over and over, uh, do what I have to do to really understand um, and really remember um, why I got it wrong. And before the exam, I've already gone through uh, most of the material either six or seven times. I've seen it six or seven times. And by then you should be pretty set and hopefully that will be stored in your long-term memory for STEP. So that pretty much sums up everything that you need to do to get A's in your classes. Um, other resources I found helpful were the handout and clicker multiple choice questions, which you 100% need to go through at least twice before the exam. USMLE RX also has more practice questions, but don't be discouraged about getting them wrong since they can be uh, a little intense. For physiology and complicated subjects, use Boards and Beyond sparingly, but you'll see that the videos can be a little bit too comprehensive for the in-house exams. Uh, we also have First Aid, which is a great resource because it compiles everything you need to know in one place and you can skim through to consolidate all of your thoughts. So depending on when you see this video, don't worry about step one quite yet, but I do want you to keep in the back of your mind that everything that you learn from Pathoma, Sketchy, Boards and Beyond will come back to haunt you for Yep, the big boy. Um, so don't just learn it for the current exam, learn it for step, as well as, you know, to become a great doctor in the future. I want to finish this video by saying that everyone studies differently, but from my experiences, this was the most efficient way to study. Um, I also want to remind you to always remember to take breaks, work out, maintain your hobbies, and most importantly, sleep. So many medical students have gone through this before you, and you can too. Uh, if you have any questions, comment them down below, or I'm sure you can figure out a way to flag me down. Good luck and enjoy the journey. Peace.